Hello. Well, basically, I'm just making this video because uh, I had planned to apply for GM and had just submitted my application. And somebody said uh, I should make something that pertains to what exactly I'm doing. If, as you guys have started, notice I have a bunch of droids here. This is basically going to be the loadout. Uh, what I did say is that they're going to be extremely difficult to get past. But uh, they're all like, redo your document, or redo your document, add more details to your document. Here's the thing, the more detail you have of a document, it may be good. But you got to keep in mind, there's going to be unforeseen consequences of having a particular document. If you have too much detail, you can't work around the surrounding. So basically, what you want to do is have a good amount of detail and a little bit of space for people to work around. So that if something happens that you weren't foreseeing, like I basically say, expect the unexpected. You never want everything to go exactly the way you plan. Because sometimes the best things that could, could come from a mistake. If you, like I said in my thing, if you take a photographer, for example, GM's basically like photography. You're basically taking a picture and you are trying to make a perfect thing of it. It's not going to go the way you want it the first time around. It's never going to go the first way you want it. Not everything's going to go the way you expected it to go, or the way you wanted it to go. So you got to keep in mind, there are unforeseen things that could happen, like you could be trying to do a passive and naval shoots your ship out of the sky. That they were supposed to let the people board a ship. So what you could do after they do that, just have a CIS ship jump out of hyperspace and have it like they were trying to chase these people because they had intel on them. But the moment the CIS realized that the ship's already destroyed, they noticed the Venator class Star Destroyer and turned their attention to the Venator. It just does all this stuff that people don't understand. When you're trying to be creative for a YouTube video, for anything, you never want extreme amounts of detail. The moment you go into crucial detail, yes, it's a good thing for photography, and it's a good thing for making things, like artwork. I do a lot of drawing, I do a lot of my own artwork for my OCs, and a lot of other people, and sometimes for a lot of different things. But you gotta remember, sometimes the best thing that came out of most of my art was a mistake. I met the person who did the artwork for Rick and Morty. And uh, he came to our local comic shop, so I went to go meet them, and he's like, "What do you think of this, this, uh, this piece of artwork for Rick and Morty?" I'm like, "It looks really good." He's then he says to me, "Can you point out some of the flaws?" I point out seven, and then I'm like, "Those are all the flaws I can find." He's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm positive that's the amount of errors." He tells me there was a total of 17 errors on that one piece of artwork. Nothing's perfect. You can look at a piece of art and just be like, this thing looks perfect, but you gotta remember, sometimes the best thing comes from an error. Now, uh, since I don't actually have the 104th or uh, 9th pack, I'm using the 212 and the... 442nd pack. This is basically where they're going to spawn. They're going to spawn in the hangar. There's going to be a lat here. It's going to be a prop lat instead of an actual working lat. This one actually works. So if I were to tap the E on it, I'd go into the lat. But uh, I want to switch this to a prop lat. But uh, I would have to go through my entire list of all my packs that I have just to find that one certain lat. But I don't feel like going through that entire issue to do it. Now, as we move through here, this is where they're going to go through to get into the city. 
Now, once they reach up here, as you guys have noticed, there's a bunch of red super battle droids. These red super battle droids are to represent where hopper mines would be. So each one of these red battle droids, super battle droids, is basically a mine. So if you see any red super battle droid, it's a lart. It's basically a hopper mine. This is what they're going to be up against in the very beginning. They got to make it past the mines to get further into the city. Now there, there's going to be commandos roaming around. Now these commandos are looking for a scientist. The scientist has a be has an R unit, an experimental one that the scientist has been working on for a long period of time. Now, they're being sent in to go find the scientist and his R unit. Now, the scientist will have a little bit of protection and uh, the event characters will get their own slice of the action. So, basically, where's the script? Basically, where he's going to be placed is I'm trying to find the place where I set everything. He's going to be in here. They're going to go through here. If you look up at the ceiling, there's two ceiling turrets right here. I'm probably not going to have the other two ceiling turrets right here, but I'm probably going to have a ceiling turret. But as they come, as once the ninth comes through here, open this. Here's the scientist. The I actually had a scientist model, but I don't have an R unit model, so I'm using the Little Pip pack. Uh, if you don't know what Little Pip is from, Little Pip is from Fallout Equestria, which is a cross between the video game series Fallout and uh, My Little Pony. Little Pip is a little bit of a badass and is from Stable 2, like a Volt. It's a, unlike a Volt, Volt tech, it's Stable tech, and she's from Stable 2. But uh, I still call them vaults because they still have the outlook. Cutie Mark's a pit buck because she dabbles with tech. But uh, enough of a little bit. Now moving on through out the map. The event character, I'm probably not going to have him. I might have him in this place. I might throw him around in somewhere else because I don't want the event characters knowing exactly where he is. So basically, they're a bunch of popper mines right off the bat that the ninth have to deal with. As they move through the alleyways, there's going to be a few more. Three right here. The reason I want to put three right here is because there's contacts right here. And as you can see right here is a commando. The commando droids are going to be event characters. Basically, the role of the commando droids are to help find the scientist. They are looking for the scientists, and so are the Republic. So, the whole goal here is for the Republic to find the scientists before the CIS. If the CIS find the scientists, they can basically try to save the scientists, but at their own risk. Because once the scientist is captured by the CIS, he'll be taken to their base. As you can see, we have a bunch of droids right here. This is a group of ten including the super battle droid it would be 11 but i'm probably not going to use super battle droids basically uh this pack is a lot more intuitive if i were to have turned off basically what i have turned on at the moment for npcs is disabled thinking because these battle droids seem to shoot whatever thing you put down other than it so basically if i were if i didn't turn that on the commando would be dead, so would the super battle droid, because they'll attack anything that's outside of its pack. But moving forward, we have a little bit more mines for them to avoid. Each, this is one of the sectors, this is going to be sector one. They're going to be like going through all the buildings. There, there's really only one way to get past all the mines which is basically going through them over here we have more droids and another SPD now 
all of them are going to have the same health, same damage. Now, this is another group of 10. I counted them all every single time I spawn them in. This is another group of 10, a little bit more spread out than the other groups, but that's because this one's a more tight corridor. Now, right here, we'll have a few more hopper mines for them to try and avoid. But then they're going to have another commando. The reason there's going to be more than one commando is basically it gives them less of a chance to, to stealth. And they're going to have to really think really hard to avoid these commandos. Because the moment a commando spots them, the commando can calms it in. And basically they're known and a squad of 20 droids will meet the 9th and the 4th. Right here we have four more mines, and then we have two more a little bit further up. Right here we have a bunch of droids. These droids are basically going to hold this spot. The reason why I set, say in the document it's going to be a pain in the butt for them to even try to take the facility is because if I go here, this is my plan for the facility. Since the CIS had already taken the facility, this is all of their troops guarding the facility. They're going to have to clear out this, and then I don't know why the door keeps closing. Then they're going to have to make it through here, which has a small group. Once they make it through here, see, like I said, the droids have a tendency to shoot whatever, but there's going to be a group of 10 right in front of the door. And then there's going to be a group of five on both sides. And then you're going to have them have to clear out to the med bay. If they want to, they can try to retake the whole entire facility to get it back for the Republic. But it is entirely up to them. That one will be out of my control. This is a puzzle piece that they can do to further out the second part. Because I do usually plan for two parts to three parts. And I normally won't start and dock for part two. I'll usually start sometimes and I'll wait for the actual part to be completed. And then I'll type up the rest of what happened during this event and what's going on for the next. But basically they're going to have droids in the back guarding this sector. If the scientist is captured, it will, he will basically go down to the prison cells. So, they would take the elevator down. Right here, they have a squad of droids basically waiting for them. He'll be placed in any one of these cells. They'll basically have to fight their way through the droids and then find which cell he's in. It will be a random cell, so I'm not showing you what cell because it's going to be a random cell. The event characters will be allowed to place them in any cell they want. They just have to tell me what cell they placed them in so that uh, they, I basically know what's going on and we have a lot of communication between both parties. And then if we head back up here, if they manage to rescue him, they'll try to make a mad dash out or they, or they could send up a squad to the second floor. But sending up a squad to the second floor might be not such a good idea because there's already a squad of four waiting for them and then there's another squad of four a squad of three waiting on the opposite side of that door and then once you go through here there i plan to fill this room up with a squad of 10 droids and then four droids leading into the room and then right here we have our tactical droid now the tactical droid has one of two options when it comes down to when they start taking the facility. One, the tactical droid can stay and fight. Or two, the tactical droid can retreat and run to a ship. Now, the ship I already have spawned in is not going to be the ship that he's going to be escaping in. But as you can see, he will have some droids covering his escape unless they clear out the droids beforehand. And basically, the tactical droid will make a run to this landing platform and escape if he chooses to escape. But if he chooses to stay and fight, he will stay and fight. 
Now you can see that there's no computers in here. I didn't spawn in any of the computers, but I do know how to build. If I were to basically say I wanted to build a wall, I wanted to build like a really or like a, put a ray shield up. I know how to spawn in this particular stuff, and I know how to how it works. So say I wanted a ray shield, I would choose this. Okay, now you're flipping into the ground. And now you're on the ground. So I, what I want to do is take this, make it into a ray shield. place it right here and then put a console basically cutting off this part and the only way to get through is to splice or hack your way through so it's not going to be very simple for them they're going to have to actually splice and hack their way through the entire thing but uh as you guys can see like i have different props different shit that i can use but primary things that i mostly use are things that I can actually control like this I enjoy using because it's easy to do builds with this stuff so let's say I wanted to build a confinement wall like right here or like a barricade or put in put a desk I have my option for my desk sinks all this shit Another thing I like is like I have trees, I have this, basically uh, I love this pack because you can really do a lot with it. So if I wanted to I could honestly just make a giant ass wall right here and then put a, put a few uh, ceiling turrets right there and then they have to go past get past the wall in order to actually physically get through. Another thing I love about this is it has two different heights so I could have it this tall which is probably a more practical height for what I would have done but uh, I can also add a few things for like cover like it comes with this I can honestly take this place it there, freeze it, and then bam, cover. But there's also many different ways I could have done it. Like, it also has an entrance way. Basically, uh, this is like an MLP font, so I use it a lot uh, when I'm doing like my own free stuff and I get to do what I want. Uh, but uh, I normally use it for like YouTube videos as you can see they'd have a lot to go through basically they'd have a lot of mines they would have a lot of shit and then they gotta avoid the tactical droids if I get too many event characters I'm probably gonna bump the amount of tactical droids that are roaming around to make it more difficult and have it at a max of four tactical droids or three and then have a few civilians roaming around the city or in specific buildings in the city and basically they'll have their own reign of their own company like maybe have someone in here and selling stuff or even have someone in here selling stuff but you always got to be prepared for anything like you got to be ready for I might not get enough event characters so you have to play around it you, you might not get the outcome you wanted it's a whole learning experience and I'm always willing to learn and try new things so I just want to do this because I want to try something new I want to try GMing for Clone Wars RP but uh basically that's the session on what's going down I want to put another uh, squad right here and then a tactical droid with them and then they'll have to probably fight through this alley as well. But basically, there's gonna be a lot of droids and a lot of combat.
Now this is going to be a lot more difficult. Uh, I know 9th does a lot of trainings for avoiding hopper mines and clearing them, but to be honest, if you look at how many red red uh, super battle droids I have, there's going to be a lot of hopper mines and there's going to be a lot of things to clear out for them. I might even put one big bomb uh, somewhere on the map and they probably have to roleplay defusing it. I might just give the tactical droid a alpha zulu and be like okay they have to find a way to defuse it. The alpha zulu is probably going to be in the mess hall because I just feel like the mess hall is the right place to actually have it. And the knife could be defusing it while the tactical droid either escaped basically it would probably be right here and then when if 104th ever, ever comes this way and they find alpha zulu they would have to try and defuse it before it actually goes off but it, it's a big if because i want to have them have a lot of role playing and i want to have them uh, actually doing stuff like they can role play with the droid, they can role play with everything, but basically the droid and the scientist will be together for 90% of this event. If the droid dies, the droid dies. If the droid lives, the droid lives. But their top priority is the scientist. Because the scientist can just make another, and if the droid ever dies, they can do a slash me. He slash me and takes info from droid or takes secret information from droid's memory banks 104th is probably going to be the one that takes it but I want them to have role playing with the event character or of uh, the scientist but he's probably going to be hidden in here and he's probably going to be where I showed you you're basically going to come up here. He has ceiling, a few ceiling turrets, and then Pip again is supposed to represent the droid since I don't have an astromech uh, pack. Uh, and then this is the scientist, but I'm probably going to have him a different model to make him look more like a civilian so that he can blend in and. Uh, if there are civilians. But again, 9th will have to clear out all this. These droids are not to represent actual droids, they're here to represent hoppers. Hopper mines. And then this is where they spawn. I might give their EMUs revive gloves if there is no... well, I plan to have an unlimited lives but might give their EMUs five gloves for at least one. Like, you die, you lose them. So they'd probably have to watch your EMU. Because I don't plan on like giving them medical gloves. But if I give them medical gloves, I'm probably going to do one term use. That way they're not asking for more medical gloves. They'll only get it once. And if they die with the medical gloves, they die with the medical gloves and they can't use them anymore. But, uh, yeah, that's how this event would most likely work. And it, it's my plan for it. It's how I plan to do it. I might, uh, put more things. Like, I don't know if I want to add more to it because it's already big and beefy and there's already a lot they have to go through but uh yeah that's basically the situation on how it's gonna go and how the plan is I may do a lot of NPC versus NPC but it, it's mainly because one it's fun to do on my free time two I honestly make that shit up as I go. That, um, all the 442nd for, and 212, 
I'm making this shit up as I go. Literally, I make an idea, and then I make shit up as I go along. Because you always have to be ready for, if something changes in the plan, you got to be ready to alter it so that it revolves around. Like I said in the beginning, say you're doing an event and it was supposed to be a passive. And a civilian ship hyperspace is in front of the Liberator. The naval decides to destroy the ship, blowing it up to smithereens. You could honestly take that and have debris hit the Liberator. You could literally take them destroying the ship and having the debris of the ship hit the Liberator, like hit the hit nose K, hit it hits Skygate, and then they gotta send 104th up. And then you could also have it to where, after that, a CIS ship jumps out of hyperspace because these civilians were actually spies for the Republic, and they had information on them, so they followed them, later seeing that the ship was destroyed, and then they noticed the Venator and they attack the Venator. You, you gotta plan things around it because if you're not thinking of the impossible or of stuff that can actually physically happen, you're not ready. You're, you're, you're not ready to actually do the event because you gotta always expect the unexpected. Plan around it. Find a way to make it more entertaining. If something goes wrong with the event, freaking Go and do something to make it interesting. If people are getting bored and someone's not getting enough context, spam the shit out of them. What? I, I don't mean like spam, spam it. Spam, spam. I mean like, give them a few things to do. Like, Give them a couple droids. If you see they're always comsing in green, give them droids. If you always see them comsing in yellow, give them a little break every now and then. Like a good way to think about it is give each station a like a five to ten minute interval before they get attacked again. That way everywhere gets contacts and everywhere gets attacked. But uh that's just me. But yeah, this is how my rundown is going to be. Basically, this is how it's going to most likely go. To be honest, if the ninth don't defuse the bomb, they will have to make a mad dash back to here because I'll just start dropping helicopter bombs on them because that base would be fucked at that point. Hmm. But yeah, this is basically the rundown, this is their spawn, and then they gotta work their way all the way through the city. Wait, where am I? Oh yeah, I'm in a building. Wait, why? No, I'm up. I'm away. Basically that, that's it for this video. This is just a recap of my plan. I don't really have a pack for these guys. Uh, I just have a 442nd, 501st, but it doesn't work. If you're wondering uh, what kind of pack, MPC packs do I have, I have a 441st, but if I spawn it in, I'm missing textures. I have a 501st, but if I spawn them in, I'm missing textures. Uh, I don't know what I need to get these packs to work. I'd like to use them in videos, but... I honestly can't because I don't know what pack I'm missing I would love to see someone use these because these are honestly a pain in the butt if you give them an e5 they're gonna be a pain in the butt to anyone because what they do uh, like how it has a sniper so if I hold down Q and disable Okay, that was a bad idea.
basically what it's supposed to do is every once in a while that droid will drop a auto turret from Battlefront 2. Basically if you've never seen one of those turrets before, it's a big sphere with a red spinning with red spinning around. And basically it shoots anything it sees. Now I don't plan to have all of these droids spawned in as soon as they get in, like I'm spawning them as they go along. Not as they uh not as they go. So if they're ever discovered, the presence at the base is going to be high, and of course, that's going to be an issue for them. But, yeah, it's just honestly, you always got to plan for the unexpected. But their whole mission is basically get in, find the scientists before the CIS, and get them out. If you can capture the planet, try to capture the planet. If Basically, it, it's a whole, you, you want to have whole gears turning, and to be honest, you may think I have had all of this prepared when I started and hit record. No, fuck no. I never have anything prepared. Do you think I, the only time I have anything prepared is if I'm doing one of those videos? If I'm doing one of the 442nd versus at 212 videos? I have all of them spawned in before I spawn in the enemies. I want to have them in the game before I actually start start spawning stuff. Like the mines will already be there. The mines will be there. The droids will not be spawned in just yet. The first bit of droids will be spawned in and the tactical droids will be roaming around looking for them. But they won't move until uh, they're all connected. But as soon as a tactical droid sees one of the 104th or the 9th, they'll come it in. A unit F-20 will be dispatched. And basically, if they're still fighting, that unit of 20 is going to be added to the ones that they're fighting. So basically, it's going to overwhelm them. I want to make it hard as possible. Or as medium hard as possible. Basically, what I mean is medium hard. Is basically make it hard but not too hard to the point where they can still make their way through and the reason it's unlimited lives is because I'm pretty sure a lot of them are gonna die most of them to the bombs most of them to the mines but I do want to have a squad in this area and a squad right here but the squad is gonna be completely different and the squad is going to have a, have a commando and he's going to be searching all these buildings and to be honest he is kind of close to the club so maybe make it there before but yeah that's basically it the, this is basically how I want to do events like you may think oh I don't put enough detail in my documents the reason why is because I'm expecting the unexpected. If they try to retake the planet, alright, they're trying to retake the planet. If they get the scientists and try to retake the planet, they can do it. You always want to expect the unexpected. You never want to be prepared for everything. Because if you're prepared for everything, something's going to go wrong. If you're prepared for an interview, that's a different story. But I hope you all enjoyed this overview of how I would do be a game master uh, and how my event will work that I submitted. Basically, uh, this is how it would work and this is my plan for it. I hope you all enjoyed. I uh, plan to do a little bit more Gears Mod and a little bit more VR chat. Maybe even some pirates or bring back the Star Trek uh, online but uh, for now this is it for this video I hope you all enjoyed leave a like leave a comment down below and I'll see all of you in the next video bye bye